हेलो क्लास वेलकम टू कनेक्टेड चिल्ड्रन इन टूडेज क्लास वी विल लर्न अबाउट फोर्स एंड लॉ ऑफ मोशन इट इज एन इंपॉर्टेंट चैप्टर इन योर सिलेबस सो बी अटेंटिव इन टूडेज क्लास टूडे वी विल लर्न वॉट फोर्स इज इट्स टाइप एंड द थ्री लॉज ऑफ मोशन these three are the basic important parts not only for the exam but it also plays a significant factor in one day to day life the topic of motion and its origins has baffled scientists and philosophers for decades We all know motion may be either uniform or non-uniform. So why does an object's phase shift over time? Do all motions necessitate a reason? If that's the case, what is the essence of the problem? When a minor hit is delivered to a ball on the ground, it does not pass indefinitely. Such findings indicate that an object's normal state is rest. Galileo Galilei and Isaac Newton took a whole new approach to understanding motion. So what is force in our daily lives we note that moving a stationary object or stopping a moving object requires some effort we usually think of this as a physical effort and we mean we have to throw touch or tug on an object to adjust its state of motion this drive strike or drag is the basis for the principle of force the influence of force is either seen or felt only by explaining what happens when a force is applied to an object can it be described Objects may be propelled into action by pushing, striking or dragging them. They travel as a result of an exertion of influence on them. So children, now we will discuss the two types of forces. Two forces are balanced and unbalanced forces. Now, we will go through this with an example. Go through the visual image shown on the slide. As seen, two strings x and y are bound to the blocks two opposite sides. The block continues to shift to the right as we add a force by pulling the string x. Similarly, pulling the y string causes the block to shift to the left. The block on the other hand would not move if it is pushed from both sides with equal force. These forces are known as balanced forces and they do not affect an object's state of rest or motion. Next, consider a scenario in which the block is being pulled by two opposing powers of varying magnitudes. The block will continue to pass in the direction of the greater force in this situation. As a result, the two forces are unbalanced and the unbalanced force behaves in the direction of movement of the block. This implies that an object is powered into motion by an unbalanced force. There are few more examples like this. Go through them on your own and if you face any problem, feel free to ask me. Now, children pay close attention to following parts of the topic because this is the most important part in this chapter. Here in this topic, we will discuss the laws of motion. The law of motion is divided into 3 parts. first law of motion second law of motion third law of motion we will go through each law separately so let's move into our topic first we will go through the first law of motion galileo deducted that objects travel at a steady speed while no force acts on them by watching their motion on an inclined plane when a marble falls down an inclined plane its velocity increases watch diagram a for better understanding in the visual section he discovered The marble comes under the unbalanced force of gravity as it rolls down achieving a definite velocity by the time it hits the bottom as you will see in the next chapter diagram B a marble rests on an ideal frictionless plane bent on both sides in diagram C Galileo said that releasing the marble from the left would cause it to roll down the slope and up the opposite side to the same height from which it was released if the planes on both sides have the same orientation the marble would ascend the same distance it traveled before rolling back the marble would move more distances until it reached the original height if the angle of inclination of the right side plane was steadily reduced the marble will continue to travel indefinitely attempting to attain the same height from which it was released if the right side plane were eventually rendered horizontal that is the slope is reduced to zero in this case The marble is subjected to no unbalanced elements. It follows that an unbalanced external force is necessary to alter the marble's motion, but no net force is required to maintain the marble's uniform motion. In real life conditions, achieving a zero unbalanced force is impossible because of the existence of a frictional force 
moving in the opposite direction of travel, this occurs. As a result, in fact, the marble comes to a halt after a certain distance. By using a smooth marble and a smooth plane, as well as a lubricant on top of the planes, the frictional force can be reduced. Children, this part is very important. Newton expanded on Galileo's theory about force and motion presenting three basic rules that control material motion. Newton's law of motion are made up of these three laws. The first law of motion is expressed as follows. An object remains in a state of rest or of uniform motion in a straight line unless compelled to change that state by an applied force. In other words, all objects resist a change in their state of motion. In a qualitative way, the tendency of undisturbed objects to stay at rest or to keep moving with the same velocity is called inertia. That is why the first law of motion is also known as the law of inertia. Children, before moving to the second law of motion, let us first go through what is inertia. If there is a resistance offered by an object to change its state of motion, if it is at rest, it tends to remain at rest. If it is moving, it tends to keep moving. This property of an object is called its inertia. We all agree that pushing an empty box is better than pushing a box full of books. Similarly, kicking a football causes it to fly backwards. However, if we kick a stone of the same size with the same amount of energy, it hardly moves. It's possible that we'll injure a foot in the process. So, we can state that inertia is the natural tendency of an object to resist a change in its state of motion or of rest. The mass of an object is a measure of its inertia. Now, children, we will go through the second law of motion. The first law of motion states that when an object is subjected to an unbalanced external force, its momentum varies or the object accelerates. We will first look at how an object's acceleration is affected by the force applied to it as well as how force is measured. Let us recall a few thoughts from our daily lives. If a player is struck by the ball during a game of table tennis, he is not injured. A fast-moving cricket ball, on the other hand, can cause injury to a spectator. However, even at speeds as slow as 5 meters per second, a moving truck will kill anyone who is caught in its way. When shot from a pistol, a small mass such as bullet will kill a human. These findings imply that the impact made by the objects is influenced by their mass and velocity. Similarly, if an object is to be accelerated, we know that a greater force is required to give a greater velocity. In other words, it seems that there is some important quantity that incorporates the object's mass and velocity. Newton coined the term momentum to describe one of these properties. The momentum P of an object is defined as the product of its mass m and velocity v. That is, P equals to mv. Momentum has both direction and magnitude. Its direction is the same as that of velocity. So the second law of motion states that the rate of change of momentum of an object is proportional to the applied unbalanced force in the direction of force. Children read the examples from the textbook. I hope you can understand those. But if you all still face a problem, feel free to ask me. Children, a last law of motion is the third law of motion. The first two laws of motion describe how an applied force alters motion and give us a way to calculate the force. According to the third law of motion, when one object exerts a force on another, the second object immediately exerts a force on the first. The frequency of these two parts is always equal, but their orientation is always opposite. These forces are often applied to various objects and never to the same one. For example, in football, we sometimes clash with a player on the other side while staring at a ball and attempting to kick it with more energy. When each of them uses coercion on the other, they are both injured. In other words, there are two power at work, not just one. Action and reaction forces are the names given to the two opposing forces. It is important to note that even though the action and reaction forces are always equal in magnitude, these forces may not produce accelerations of equal magnitudes. This is because each force acts on a different object that may have a different mass. The third law states that every action has an opposite and equal reaction. Children, go through the examples. It will clear your doubts. So, children, I hope the three laws of motions are clear to all of you. So now, we will finish this chapter with the last topic of your day with conservation of momentum. Assume two particles, say two balls A and B with masses MA and MB are moving in the same direction in a straight line at opposite velocities UA and UB. There are no other unbalanced external forces intervening on them. Assume that UA is greater than UB and the two balls clash as seen in the graphic section. The ball A exerts a force FAB on ball B and the ball B exerts a force FBA on ball A during a collision that lasts t time. 
assume that V A and V B are the corresponding velocities of the two balls A and B after the collision. As a consequence of this perfect collision experiment, we can assume that the sum of the two objects' momentum before collision equals the sum of the two objects' momentum after collision. Assuming no external unbalanced force acts on them, the law of conservation of momentum is what this is called. This argument can also be expressed as the overall momentum of the two particles remain constant or is conserved by the collision. So children, we are done with the chapter. I hope I have made this lesson as easy as possible for you all to understand. Now try to answer these personal questions on your own. Your time's up. Now pay attention as I'm going to read the answers out. It was a great experience and I'm pretty much sure you guys feel the same. With that said, today's class comes to an end. We will meet in the next one. Thank you.